Let's then move over and look at the leads. There's three main leads which are on this figure here, lead one, lead two, and lead three. These are the original leads created by Eindhoven. So those are the standard three leads. We can shift them about 45 degrees, and that gives us what are called the augmented leads. So if we look at the frontal plane, AVR points towards the right shoulder, AVL points towards the left shoulder, and AVF points straight up and down. We can also set up what are called precordial leads, and those move across the chest and pick up voltage changes in the transverse plane, so from front to back essentially. If you'd like to look at those leads more in detail, I have them on the other side of this sheet. So again, AVF is basically straight down, AVL points towards the left shoulder, and AVR points towards the right shoulder. So they're very similar to Eindhoven's triangle with a little shift, with a 45 degree shift. The precordial leads look at the heart in a front to back direction, so I have the same voltage changes here. But now I'm looking in the transverse plane, and I've got V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. Okay, so now I got my two first pieces of the puzzle, the cardiac conduction cycle, and then the leads. Let's put those together. But before we can, we need to talk about how the leads pick up those voltages, and that can be a little bit tricky. I've mentioned part of it already. Step one down here is the ECGs sum voltages. They don't pick up individual voltage changes. So even though, so even though the voltage is traveling across the atrium, in multiple directions, the ECG only picks up one red vector, one vector. Also, ECGs only pick up that part of a voltage change that is parallel to the lead. I think about this metaphorically. If you're trying to see somebody running across your field of vision, if they're running right at you, it's really hard to see how fast they're going. And it works the same with a lead. If the voltage is traveling right at the lead, it's hard for the lead to see it. If somebody's running across your field of view, so parallel, so parallel to the plane of your eyes, it's much easier to see that movement and how fast it is. So if a voltage change is running parallel with a lead, then that lead is very good at picking it up. The last little bit of this piece of the puzzle is if the voltage change is in the same direction as the lead, it'll go up on the ECG. So notice that the leads have arrows assigned to them. So they go in a certain direction. If the voltage change goes in that same direction, it's going to go up on the ECG. If the voltage change goes in the opposite direction of the lead, it's going to go down on the ECG. I've got a little figure that shows that here, shows both of those parts. In this case, the arrow is very parallel to the lead, and it's running in the direction of the lead, so it shows up as a big deflection on the ECG. And the next heart over, I'm running with the lead, so I go up, but I'm not as parallel, so I don't see it as much. If the direction of the voltage change is perpendicular to the lead, the lead is not very good at picking up the voltage change. Going back to a more parallel voltage change, so it's more parallel to the lead, so the lead will see it, but now the voltage is going in the opposite direction of the lead, so the trace goes down on the ECG. And our last one, and our last one, the voltage change is very parallel to the lead, so it's going to be a big deflection on the ECG, but the voltage change is running in the opposite direction of our lead, so it goes down on the ECG. The last thing to do, and I'm over my 10 minutes, but the last thing to do is put these rules together into interpreting the ECG. And what would be nice is if you could print this off, I'll make sure that this figure is available on my website. You can print this off and spin it, and you can apply those three rules. So let's look at lead two first. This is a classic lead. Depolarization of the atria runs parallel to our lead, and it's also running with our lead, so it's going to go up the P wave. Depolarization runs against our lead. It's very parallel to lead two, so it's going to take us down the P wave. Septal depolarization runs against our lead. It's pretty perpendicular, though. And what that means is it's going to be picked up by lead 2 as a negative deflection, but it's going to be kind of small, and that's shown in purple here. Apical depolarization runs with our lead, and it's very parallel to our lead, so it's going to take us up on the ECG. Left ventricular depolarization runs against our lead, turns a corner around the back of the heart, and runs perpendicular to our lead. So on the ECG lead 2, it's going to take us down. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to pause while we're in the plateau phase of the muscle action potential and then we'll repolarize. Repolarization runs with our lead, so we go up the T wave, runs against our lead, so we go down the T wave, and then it runs perpendicular to our lead, so lead two is not gonna see that. I'm gonna speak, this is an upside down ECG, so again, this would be much easier if you printed this off and could spin this, so you could look from this view. Lead one is gonna pick up depolarization of the atria as a positive deflection, so the voltage change in depolarization of the atria is running with our lead, it's not as big as lead 2 because it's not as parallel to lead 1 as it is in lead 2. So notice that our P wave is generally smaller in lead 1 than lead 2. Depolarization takes us back down. It's running against our lead, so we're going down. 
Subtle depolarization shows up really large in lead 1, so the Q wave can be expected to be larger in lead 1, because again, it's more parallel. It's running against our lead in the opposite direction of our lead, so it goes down. Apical depolarization comes around and runs with our lead. It's not as parallel to lead 1 as in lead 2, so that our wave will often be bigger in lead 2 than in lead 1. Next, we have ventricular depolarization. It runs perpendicular to our lead, so we don't really see it, and then it runs against our lead, so it takes us back down. The T wave is repolarization, runs with our lead, so it takes us up on the ECG, perpendicular to our lead, and then against our lead, so it takes us back down. Lead 3 is the most tricky one, not so much with the P wave, but with the QRS and the T. Depolarization of the atria is with our lead, so it's pointing towards our lead. It's largely perpendicular, so it's not going to be picked up very well by lead 3. Depolarization of the atria runs against our lead. Again, it's largely perpendicular, so the P wave is going to be small in lead 3. Septal depolarization is going to be positive on the ECG because it runs with our lead, although it's pretty small. Next, we've got apical depolarization, which is running with our lead, but it's also very small because it's perpendicular to the lead. Ventricular depolarization is a little tricky because it runs against our lead and thus down on the ECG. It turns around and goes with our lead as the voltage travels around the back of the heart. That means it's running with our lead, so we're going to head back up on the trace. Our repolarization runs primarily perpendicular to lead 3, so we don't see this phase of repolarization. We then run against our lead, and that's going to be down on the ECG. We turn around and run with our lead. That's going to take us up on the ECG. So what I'm hoping is that you can combine these three rules on the left, the cardiac conduction cycle, the leads, and how the leads pick up the voltage changes in the cardiac conduction cycle to complete a, an understanding of ECG traces in lead 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to flip this sheet over and go through the augmented leads and the precordials. The rules are essentially the same, but the traces are clearly going to look a little bit different. So this is the back side of the figure, and it goes through augmented leads and precordial leads. And I'll make sure that this figure is also available in a link in the description of the video. Now the rules are essentially the same in the augmented leads that I have on the left and the precordial leads. In fact, they're so similar for the augmented leads as leads 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to skip right over those and let you download the file and work through those on your own. I do want to take you through the precordial leads, which essentially look at the voltage flows through a transverse plane of the heart. So I've got a figure of the transverse plane. I've got depolarization of the atria in red still, repolarization of the atria in orange, septal depolarization, apical depolarization, late left ventricular depolarization, and repolarization. If you want to understand where I've got these flows, then again, go back to that springerlink.com and look to investigative electrocardiography in epidemiological studies and clinical trials because there are figures, figures 1.14 and 1.16, that maps out how the voltage changes travel through the heart in both the frontal and the transverse plane. Now I've simplified it a little bit, but I've kept it pretty much in keeping with how they did it. And these are the directions of the flows through the heart when looking from the transverse plane. I'll take you through a couple, but I'm trying to get this video done in under 20 minutes, so it's only two YouTubes. I said 10, which generally means 20 for me, twice as long as I think it's going to be. Apologies for that. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6 are lined up in the frontal plane. And the voltages are picked up for these leads just as they were for leads 1 through 3. So if the voltage is in the same direction of the lead, it goes up. If it's perpendicular, then the lead doesn't see it. If the voltage travels against the lead, it's going to go down. Voltage change is very parallel to the lead, it's going to be very large. So let's go through V1. Depolarization of the atria again is here in red. It runs largely perpendicular to our lead, but a little bit with our lead. So it's going to go up on the ECG. Repolarization of the atria runs against our lead. Again, it's largely perpendicular, so it's going to be very small. Septal depolarization runs with our lead, so we go up a little. Apical depolarization runs perpendicular to our lead, so we don't see it. Then it runs against our lead, so it heads down. The QRS heads down in V1. Late ventricular depolarization runs perpendicular to our lead, and then with our lead, so we head back up. And then repolarization runs just like it did in lead 1 and lead 2, runs with our lead turns around and heads against it, so we go up and down. So I'd really like to finish this video in under 20 minutes, so I'm hoping that by taking you through V1, you can download this file and take yourself through V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. If not, I will do a third part video where I will take you through the pre-cordials. If you can put it together on your own, then thank you for your attention. You don't need to watch video 3. I hope it was helpful.